It is to the subject of dying and psychedelics what Bill Moyers and Joseph Campbell were to mythology. You know, I've always been interested in how film can be um, a real transformational tool, and it feels like the theater can be a modern campfire where we get to tell our stories and um, look at our past, contemplate our future, and do that with a group of people you wouldn't otherwise be sitting in your living room. So there's a diversity factor that is really juicy. So these conversations that I get to facilitate after, I, you know, we call them Q&As and I answer questions, but it's really about the audience responding to each other and having these conversations, often between young 17, 18 year olds and 70 or 80 year olds. What a fabulous gathering of energy, right, <laughs> you know? This, this crazy thing happened after they started their research at Harvard. And this crazy thing is called the 60s. And it, this is sort of my, my take on it, but I think that is, uh, in a way, it's kind of what went wrong. So as the 60s progressed, Tim got to, he was becoming more of a, a political figure, really, than a research figure, and Richard Alper became Ram Dass. A lot of this serious research just sort of went by the wayside. So I, I, I would love to hear your perspective, Charlie, on what, what happened. In many respects, the culture was not ready, and the culture could not really take in the potential of these compounds and uh, integrate the insights and work with them in a proactive, constructive manner. But in the early 70s, I had, I had the opportunity to read the literature, and I was just uh, thunderstruck by the, uh, by the incredible potential these compounds had to, uh, to help us understand and, and to really facilitate the healing process. And you said when you were doing these studies in Switzerland, it was with a relative low dose, 50 microgram level. That would be called psycholytic, psychotherapy, to kind of break down defensive uh, structures, to, to, to allow for more insight, some breakthroughs. Uh, it, it, following the, the psych, psycholytic um, model was a psychedelic model, which was a higher dose model. And in the U.S., there was, as time went on, more and more interest in utilizing the high dose upwards to 200 to 250 or, or even higher. That was often felt you needed more, more push to, to work through heavy defenses and, um, and also to create that... Uh, that, that uh, psycho-spiritual epiphany, that mystical transcendent flash. And it was found the higher dose was more effective in treating addictive disorders and, uh, and especially chronic alcoholism. That high dose subjects uh, who had that mystical level experience seemed to have the best outcome as measured by s sustained sobriety over time. We're planning to get back into working with terminal cancer patients, but the study I've been doing the last couple of years has been another MDMA study, but with an entirely different population. This is with um, uh, adults on the autism spectrum who have severe incapacitating social anxiety. So we're treating that social anxiety. And actually, let me say, we're still looking for two subjects. We are standing on, uh, on the precipice of a golden age of psychedelic research once again. An experience more than a movie. Yeah, it was beautiful. Thank you, thank you guys very much.